<laughs> if you like the video make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. For more videos like this, what's the scariest thing that ever happened to you? I was on a cross-country road trip with three of my closest friends. We had just finished undergrad and were driving from New York to LA, camping in state parks and doing some hiking along the way. Our second and third nights was spent in Yellowstone in mid-May. The first night was frigid and our tent froze solid. On the second night, a warm front blew through. With the incessant wind, I don't think I fell asleep until well after midnight. I woke up to the continued rustling of wind just as the sun came up. Underneath that sound was a closer sound though. I convinced myself it was the wind and tried to fall back asleep, until I heard a snort. And then something brushed against the tent. I froze and tried to be as quiet as I could. Knowing bears are very common in the area, I did all I could not to attract any attention to myself in the tent. After laying motionless for a few minutes, my tentmate started to stir. As he woke, I tried to explain our situation as quietly as possible. Unfortunately, he found the concept of a bear circling our tent exciting. Immediately he went to quietly unzip the tent so he could peer out under the dew cover. With his head now outside the tent he said something I couldn't hear. Pulling his head back in, he looked right at me and said there are so many of them. Seeing nothing on my face but sheer terror, he realized he had to clarify. It was just a herd of buffalo. Some years ago I woke in the middle of the night and saw a carnival in my bedroom mirror. There was a large striped tent and fireworks and flames in the sky, and I saw that a dog was walking away from the tent on his hind legs and coming closer to the glass. The dog was looking at the ground and did not see me, but I was terrified it would look up and catch my eye so I stayed completely still so as not to attract its attention. I watched from my blankets for several hours. The dog never stopped walking but never appeared to get any closer either. It was not particularly threatening in any way but I was so scared to see this animal walking like a man. As a young child I also had a vision of my grandmother tottering down the stairs at a time when she was not staying with us. Through the kitchen doorway I could see the banister in the hallway, and still remember very clearly the sight of her gnarled hand sliding into view. She disappeared before she came through the door, but I heard her voice saying something very aggressive and insulting to me as she came down the stairs. I knew she was coming to confront me about being drunk, but she herself was the one who sounded strangled and drunken. This is not at all in her character, and I am not afraid of the woman so it was a confusing and frightening experience. Most recently, I was alone in the house and suddenly could hear something moving about in the kitchen. I did not hear footsteps exactly but heard the knocking and sliding noises of things being moved around, and the clanging of pots and pans. Instantly I imagined that there was a mouse as big as a bear in the kitchen, and I was more terrified than I have ever been. I thought this mouse was moving all of our things around and that he could do me a lot of harm if he knew I was upstairs. I froze to the spot and could not move until I heard the front door open and my mother call that she was home. This is the scariest thing that has ever happened to me because while I was aware that my thought process was irrational I still could not help my vivid imaginings of the bear-sized mouse and had no power over my fear. About 10 years ago, I was in high school at the time, I was playing on the computer after dinner. I ran upstairs to get a glass of water when I heard three loud bangs and glass shattering everywhere around me. I crouched to the ground and was covered in shards of glass. My mom and sister ran into the farthest room from the front of our house while my dad grabbed two pistols and handed me one. We went outside looking to see who had just shot up our house. No one was there, but I was still shitting bricks thinking about what I would do if I found them. Turns out it was my estranged non-blood related uncle who was getting divorced and wanted to take it out on the family. Still scared the shit out of me. This happened in a country town not too far from the city in Australia in the summer of 2007. My parents had just bought a house on acreage, it was an old Queenslander-style house, on stilts with wraparound veranda. Even though it was on a large property we had neighbors pretty close to the left of us and behind us and was next to what was considered a main road. We had a long gravel driveway from the road to a double carport and our front door. The house was actually two houses separated by an enclosed breezeway that my dad turned into a bar. My parents and younger siblings lived in one side of the house and my older sibling, my partner and I in the other side. On the first night of moving into the house we went out for a family dinner at around 6 pm, by the time we got home it was around 10 pm and we all went to bed. Not one person out of the seven people living in the house heard anything unusual that night. I woke up around 6.30 am, the rest of the family was awake and we all had breakfast together in my parents' side of the house. My partner and I were heading into town to the store, as I opened the front sliding door to the carport I noticed tiny footprints on the top step. As I bent down to look at them closer I noticed the footprints were made in blood. 
I called everyone in the house to come and have a look at them. There were around six sets of footprints, all the same size, we all agreed around the size of a three-year-old's feet. The youngest child in the house at the time was six, we checked her feet and she had no signs of an injury. When placing her foot next to the footprints hers were at least twice the size. After we all freaked out for a bit my mum told us to carry on to town and she would report it to the police. As we drove up the driveway we turned left to get onto the main road and we drove past the neighbor's house. What we saw still makes the hairs on my neck stand up just thinking about it. Outside of our neighbor's pedestrian gate was my little sister's bike stopped exactly in front of the gate with the training wheels bent upwards towards the sky. My partner and I both got out of the car to inspect the bike, there was no sign of blood but the metal bars the training wheels were on were really strong, it would have literally been like bending steel to get them into the position they were in. Whoever took the bike had to walk underneath the house to get it which meant walking up and down the gravel driveway without making a sound, my parents' bedroom looked directly over the driveway and my dad was an annoyingly light sleeper and would always know if someone was walking up the driveway. The police filed a report about the kids' footprints but nothing ever came of it. Nothing else has happened at the house apart from both my oldest sister and mum saying they saw a reflection of a teenage girl in the laundry room window on two different occasions, laundry window was about 10 feet off the ground. So it still remains a mystery to us today about what happened that night. I am 100% serious with this story. It was Labor Day weekend of 2008, that Friday night I went to my buddy's house for a few beers and we watched train spotting. I got back to my place about 11pm, I played with my turntables for about an hour and crashed. Now at the time, I was living with my parents, so that night it was me, my brother, mom and stepfather home. Now when I go to bed, I always left my phone on my desk, which was kitty corner from my bed, as so if it vibrated I could hear it. It was a Nokia and we all know how loud their vibrate is. So anyways, at 3.12 am I am woken up by the light from my phone. Now, my chair was pushed in under the desk, so I couldn't actually see the phone, but I could see the light emitting from it. I crawl out of bed, pull the chair out and check my phone. No missed call, text, voicemail, nothing. The phone had just seemingly lit up for no apparent reason. At this point, I go back to my bed and set my phone on the floor beside it. At this point, I am still sitting up, and I notice that both my computer monitors on my desk, their power lights are flashing independently from each other, in no particular pattern. This is starting to confuse me, on what exactly is happening. I look ahead, and my dish cable box is doing the same thing, the LED on it is blinking. The computer monitors and the cable box are on different outlets. At this point, I think something is wrong with the power, so I get up and open my bedroom door to look down the hall. My mother always left a lamp on in the living room. It was on normally, the light was not flickering. I go back to bed at this point. Now it being September, it was still relatively warm out. I had my window open the majority of the way, and the blinds cracked a good few inches. I get the most overwhelming sensation that I am being watched. Huge lump in my throat, hair on the back of my neck standing up. At this point I sink deeper into my bed and pull the covers closer to my face. Now this part, every time I recall it, type about it, or speak to others about it, I still get chills. My walls seemingly starting to make noise, like someone was scratching at them with their fingernails. All four walls in the ceiling. This loud, dragging noise. I'll never forget it. I don't know how I managed to fall asleep that night, but I did. The next morning I asked my brother, who shares a wall with me if he heard anything, he did not. This girl I was sort of seeing at the time was super religious and when I told her what had happened, she began to get teary-eyed when I told her the story and never wanted me to tell slash talk to her about it again. I did some research on the subject of demons slash ghosts and with what had happened, the time being around 3 am and the lights flickering, I guess this is called the devil's hour as Christ was crucified at 3 pm, and demonic activity is more heightened at 3 am as sort of a mockery to Christ. I'm 29 years old now, and let me tell you, that is the most scared I have ever been in my life. Part of me wants to have it happen again though, just to experience something like that, again. Thanks for reading. I was in a camping with a group of my town. So, a day, after eating some marshmallows on a fire we went sleeping. A few hours later we got woke up by the bells of that cows running away from something. We, me and two friends, came out our tent to check what was happening. We couldn't see anything so we were asking what could have happened when we heard a bear of a hill 50 empty behind us. We've seen the organizers grabbing pitchforks and everything to hit this bear if needed. Me and my friends decided to follow them instead of finding a safe place. We were scared like hell, my whole body was shaking. We moved near the fire to talk what to do, now we are 20 MT to this bear and we can still hear his sound but we couldn't see anything. We screamed, hoping he runs away, 
then we heard some people laughing. The parents of a friend made us a prank, I've never been so scared in my whole life. Never. Once, back in 1990, I went with five other people to a burnout monastery in the San Mateo Hills in California. There was a full moon that night so we could see things really clearly even though it was close to midnight. There was a free standing wall about three stories high that there was no way to access. Well, we were hanging out on a stone balcony in another burnout building and had a clear view of that three-story wall. For some reason all of us happened to be looking towards that wall at the same time, and we all saw the figure of a person standing on top of it. Seriously, it was really spooky as hell. It was completely black, because it was dark, but because of the moon it was easy to tell it was human-shaped. I think somebody pointed it out and asked if anybody else saw it and when we all agreed that it was there we jumped up and ran back down the dirt road so fast that we actually forgot a blanket we had brought. To this day I have no idea where the place was exactly at, which kind of makes it even more freaky. I was in the less than legitimate part of the Paris catacombs. In order to stop people getting round it, parts of the tunnels have been injected with concrete. Anyway, the place is so vast, in World War II. The French resistance and the Nazis both had bunkers in there and they never knew about each other. Obviously, we wanted to see these, but to get to them, you had to crawl through one of these tunnels that had been injected with concrete. Usually they're about 8 feet high, but this was about 7 feet of concrete and about 200 meters long. So, we're shuffling along one after another, pushing our kit out ahead of us, when about halfway through the whole thing starts shaking and then there's a thunderous noise. You can't turn around and run, because you're crawling through such a tiny space and anyway, there's people ahead and behind. That was terrifying. In our truck with my mom, dad, and sister heading to my aunt's funeral. My dad was driving. Huge downpour out of nowhere. My dad lost control. We started heading into the oncoming lane. We instead did a 360? 540? 720? I don't quite remember, I just remember holding on and spinning, closing my eyes and hearing my mom, dad, and sister literally screaming for their lives. We ended up getting back into our lane and skidding down a hill before crashing into the side of a mountain. I was the first one to speak up and make sure we were all okay. My dad and sister were the worst off being on the side that hit the mountain. Of course this was rural Appalachia, so we didn't have any cell signal. Since I was going to a funeral, I'm wore all in formal clothing. Ever go through about 5 meters of pure thorny bullshit in a suit? I got up to the road and quickly ran to the gas station we crashed near. In hindsight, I'm pretty proud of my reaction. I had service at the road, but I remember thinking if we hydroplaned, someone else might too. I need to get away from the road. I got to the station and called 911. We were all fine and the truck was totaled. We ended up not going to that funeral. I was sore for about a week after that. After reading some of the things here and hearing some stories from my friends, I'm glad that this is my scariest thing. So many people have seen far worse. Still, it sucked. I still have nightmares. Sometimes it's of the whole accident, sometimes it's just hearing my family screaming. It's one of the two nightmares I get where I'll wake up sweating, shaking, and sometimes slightly crying. For as long as I can remember, my three brothers and I have always been haunted by these things which we call figures. They are basically dark, human-shaped silhouettes. We usually see them in the front room of our house, which is where our dog usually is if he's not outside or eating food. Our dog never seems to react in any way, he just calmly stares out the window, barking at the occasional dog that goes by. We have always told our parents of our encounters with the figures, however, they themselves have never come across anything like that, except for the time my mum heard the old piano, which we have in the front room, play by itself. When my nana died back in 2013, I kept seeing them left, right and center. I would always hear whispers at night, see strange flashes and even feel the presence of someone, or something. One night, I was tossing and turning in bed, trying to get to sleep. I opened my eyes and saw a figure standing at the edge of my bed, except this one was different from the others. It was a luminous, white figure. I stared at it for a second before closing my eyes in fright, not daring to open them for the rest of the night. They even followed me to New Zealand. My family and I were in a raft, going down this stream in a cave. I was admiring the beauty of the cave when suddenly, I felt a hand run its fingers through my hair. I turned to my mum, who was right next to me in the raft, and told her to stop touching my hair. However she said that she wasn't touching my hair. That was when I got really freaked out. It couldn't have been my dad because he was on the other side of the raft, nor could it have been my brothers because firstly, they would never do anything like that to me and secondly, it felt like an adult hand. After a few months, 
These encounters ceased. Even though this happened three years ago, it still gives me shivers. I used to work an 11 p.m. to 7 a.m. shift when I was a security officer on a very old campus. The campus was a colony in the 1600s, then a military base from the revolution through World War II. Well, where do I start? There's the time I brought a trainee into the most haunted building and we both heard a girl giggling and the temperature dropped. The building was the former officer's quarters and was supposedly where an officer's wife had died, as well as a soldier that died from sickness, and another was executed. In that same building a few weeks later I saw a woman walk across the stairs landing above me. Into a wall. She was pitch black. Then there's the time I was in the basement of the old hospital and clearly heard a man talking. Searched the basement, didn't find a radio or any sign of someone in there. Then there's one of my favorites that made me a believer, before I had seen anything, I was entering the officer's building with my old cell phone recording audio, and I asked if there was anyone in there. There wasn't, staff had left long ago and all the doors were shut, I was patrolling to make sure it was locked up and the lights were off. I didn't hear anyone respond, but after I left I played back my recording and heard a sharp whisper. Chris. I was perfectly still at the time. My hand was not moving on the phone. Something there knows my name. That was probably four years ago and I can still hear it, can still feel the goosebumps. Damn I wish I still had that file. I was babysitting my three-year-old niece last summer while my sister and Bill were away for the day. Everything was going just fine, and it was a lot of fun to get to spend time with my smart little niece. Sis lives in a nice neighborhood and it was a nice day out. The niece went down for her nap around 1pm, and I was checking my emails in the living room when I hear a loud crash from. Somewhere back in the house where the bedrooms are. Alarmed, I creep, trying to be quiet because nap time and because potential intruders are crossing my mind, toward the sound. I open the door to my niece's room, and she's silently sleeping. Hmm. Okay. So perhaps it was something a neighbor did or something like that that made the sound. But it sounded like it came from within the house. So I go searching for any broken windows, ornaments, etc. through the house. I'm checking the office room when my niece toddles into the room behind me. I turn around, and she's rubbing the sleep out of her eyes as she says um. Uncle Craigmaster? Um. Who's the man in mommy's bedroom? What? The. Fuck. I remember the hair standing on the back of my neck and feeling really tense and uneasy. Almost nauseous. The bedroom was the first room I had checked to see if anything was amiss, though it's not like I had inspected it beyond a quick scan. I tell my niece to stay in the room we're currently in for just one minute and that I'll be right back, and then I go through the house, grabbing a kitchen knife because it's the first thing I could think of to grab as a weapon. I get to my sister's bedroom, and there's nobody there. Is my niece just being silly and unknowingly scaring the biases out of me? I check under the bed, in the closet, in the adjacent bathroom again, and draw the curtains to the shower, in the cabinets. Nothing. I put back the knife, go back to my niece, and ask her what the man looked like and where he was in mommy's room. Her response, he's in the picture. God damn it. Of course. Turns out, she had gotten herself out of bed, as she tends to do, and, I don't know, just randomly decided to ask me about a picture in her mom's room, the man in question was her deceased great uncle in his family photo. I still don't know what caused that big crash, but it really didn't matter. I didn't let my niece out of my sight pretty much for the rest of the day until my sister came back. I took a summer job when I was 19 as a tree planter in northern Quebec, around Settile for those who are curious. This is extremely expansive and wild territory, dense woods with little population, and our camp was very isolated. At sundown, mosquitoes were a serious safety concern. They would form dense clouds and get absolutely everywhere, to the point where if you had to go outside after sundown, your movements and actions had to be premeditated and executed carefully, if even one part of your body wasn't covered. It was grueling work. You were isolated, the closest planter to you could be one kilometer away, excavating tiny holes for saplings with your tool, reaching for a sapling around your belt and planting it. Large bugs, bears, and all sorts of delightful creatures abounded. Every two hours or so, a supervisor would make his rounds in a van to check up on us. We were about an hour drive away from camp. At the end of one day, the van pulled up to pick me up with all the other planters inside. Everyone is exhausted but in good spirits and ready to go back to camp to relax. I load my gear in the van, turn around to grab my empty containers, and the van just leaves. They're playing a joke cause on the new guy. So I run after it a bit but they're accelerating. I'm screaming at the top of my lungs but they are listening to Guns N' Roses with the volume on maximum. 
They leave my field of vision. It's getting dark, I'm alone in some of the densest woods in the world with a shitload of gear I can't carry, and I start dry heaving and shaking, preparing myself for the swarms of mosquitoes and whatever else. I seriously thought I was going to die. Just when the last rays of the day go out, about a half hour later, I'm snapped out of my fetal position and crying by the sound of an engine. Coincidentally, the big boss was going around that day's circuit, looking for equipment and other stuff that might have been left out in the fields. He stops, shakes his head, and tells me to get in. He doesn't speak a single word to me. I'll never forget the look on his face. We get back to camp and the girl who was driving the first van is in hysterics and crying her eyes out. She couldn't even make eye contact with me. People kept a wide berth of about 3 meters from me all night, apparently I had the thousand yard stare of a man who faced the serious possibility of having to spend the night in northern Quebec's woods without any shelter or protection, or food. She was fired the following day, and I promptly packed my shit, got on the next shuttle and got out of there. I refused the many bonuses and various services offered to me as compensation. The girl and the people in the van didn't even notice I wasn't in the van until they got back to camp 45 minutes later. They would have come back, but the sheer prospect of being on that dirt road, as the lights go out and the woods come alive is the most terrifying thing I hope to experience. So when I go down to the river and decide to explore, it's a relatively busy area with people almost constantly walking through it, find a small dirt path off to the side of the main path and decide to follow it. It leads to a clearing near a creek that is mainly covered by trees and isn't visible to anyone walking the main path, while there we discover a fully laid out blanket with a couple of condom wrappers near it so we assume someone uses that place to fuck. How wrong we were. So when I sat near the river and kissed a little bit until we discovered that a man was watching us and having a wank, when he noticed we discovered him he waited 30 seconds before turning away and texting someone. So when I followed another path out to avoid the guy, only to realize the other path only went further up the creek into a hill that was a dead end. Decided to wait for about 10 minutes before going back, scope things out to realize there are now 5 guys blocking the exit and guarding the path back, it's really a very secluded path so clearly they'd scope the place our beforehand. Where we ended up they couldn't actually see us due to all the trees and bush we had to actually go through, we ended up waiting for about an hour until we realized that they were still guarding the exit and that something was seriously wrong and called the police. We hid in the bush with a knife and a broken glass bottle. Within two minutes there were sirens and the men must have ran as soon as they heard cops. Even the police could not find the trail, that's how hard it was to find. Basically the police said well we haven't had any cases of robberies around here today. So and I believe that if we had tried to leave we would have been murdered and I would have been raped. It was very obvious that the group of men had the place completely scoped out and it definitely wasn't the first time they'd done this considering the blanket and condom wrappers. We've both agreed to never go to that part of the river again. Kudos to myself for keeping calm in that situation because I was on the verge of having a panic attack and completely shutting down. December 3rd last year, I was paying soccer with my friends on our high school's soccer field. It was during lunch and relatively calm. Then at the McDonald's literally across the street. Gunshot, gunshot. All off-campus students were hauling ass back to the school jumping fences and running through traffic and shit. Two cops storm in and businesses by the McDonald's were freaking the fuck out. They couldn't find the shooter. And they were bringing all students in the school. You could not tell me a school shooting was not about to go down. After two hours in lockdown pictures of the shooter started coming up and it was indeed a student. And apparently there was another shooter on campus. Guess which lockdown room was the shooter preparing his attack? Of all the fucking rooms, the one I was in. Cops came in requesting for him to come out and he starts resisting. Fortunately they were able to take control. Another hour or so later we were free. We get out of the school and there's news trucks everywhere. Interestingly enough my friend and I originally planned to go to McDonald's that day for lunch. She had to cancel because of tutoring. Thank God. When I was treading water in the middle of a pool with my wife. We look over to see our two-year-old running towards the ten-foot end, my parents were supposed to be watching her. Right off the side she went and sank like a rock to the bottom. I had to swim, with a torn labrum and rotator cuff mind you, from the center of the pool over 25 feet and down 10 to reach her. The entire time I was thinking she's a goner already, no way she could have held her breath so long, let alone at all, she knows nothing of holding her breath, we had just watched a documentary on discovery that the newborn breath holding reflex goes away after age of 1. This was pure, gut-wrenching terror on so many levels. Hoping she wasn't dead, hoping I wouldn't fail to get there in time. Hoping I would not fail in finding her on the first shot. Hoping I wouldn't run out of air. Hoping I could do it. 
It was all on me and I gotta tell you my track record of failing at shit is pretty much 100%. I got a hold of her leg and held on like a vice and made the split second decision to swim rather than continue down a few more feet to thrust off. I got to the top but only had a leg as I was trying desperately to hold her out of the water while I treaded. With my other hand I kept trying to grab her head to get it up too, as you can imagine only having a leg, her head was down in the water. No one was helping. A pool of 50 people and no one was fucking helping at all. I thought this can't be. Someone has to help. Are you serious? Are you fucking kidding me no one? Is she still even alive? Will these lost seconds cost her her life? Finally my mom grabbed her and pulled her out. Wide eyed, she took a deep breath. I lost my shit. The relief overloaded my senses and I started shaking and crying. I hugged her for, like 30 minutes straight as we sat on a chair and cried. Later I said what were you thinking? Her words still make me tear up, I fell daddy. I was so scared and I was underwater and looked for you and mommy everywhere but you weren't the. I was crying mommy, daddy. And I held my breath. Then you saved me. Oh reddit I felt helpless and petrified with fear for days, even now when I think of how close and what if this what if that. Hit another car, as a passenger, head on going about 50 miles per hour in the middle of a turn on a country road. I was 15 and coming back from a festival with an old girlfriend. She was mad for whatever reason and driving aggressively slash recklessly to show me. In the middle of a blind corner we, in a late 90s Grand Cherokee, met another medium-sized SUV going about 15 miles per hour over the limit. I'll never forget momentarily locking eyes with the driver of the other car as we were directly in front of each other separated by two engines and two windshields for a second. After the impact the other vehicle stopped in its tracks but our vehicle bounced and went off the road to the right. My GF tried to turn but when we hit grass in a sideways slide which caused the top heavy SUV to start tumbling down the hill into a valley ultimately putting us on the passenger side of the car in a shallow creek. Considering neither of us had seat belts on and the airbags didn't deploy I came away with a cut on my arm and she had a minor neck injury. So yeah. That's my scariest thing. I was playing with my daughter 18 months, and stopped to use the restroom. In the time that I went to the restroom and came out, she was gone. Back gate leading downstairs was closed, all doors upstairs were closed. She was gone. I ran outside, with shorts, barefoot, in the blizzard. She, in the few minutes that I was not with her, had managed to cross our neighborhood street and walk the sidewalk three houses down. She was fine, she wanted to explore. I originally had checked the front door, and it was closed. Must not have been latched and she closed it on her way out. This happened a few days ago and I'm still having nightmares and anxiety attacks. This kind of thing has happened to me a few times over the course of my life, starting when I was about 11. I turned 50 this year. It never gets any less frightening. I'll just share the most recent one but know that similar things have happened with regularity though my life. Last Saturday, after I dropped my kid off at practice, I walked to the grocery store to buy snacks for after, it was my turn and I hadn't time to do that beforehand. Some random cat called me and I ignored him, that's the safest thing to do. Usually, cat callers leave it at that. Not this guy. He follows me though the store, his comments escalating from damn, woman, you got a nice ass. To come on, lady, give me a smile. I know you can hear me. To man I love watching your tight little ass and I noticed how your shirt lifted up and I saw your belly when you picked up those juice boxes. To fucking cunt, why won't you talk to me? I ditched him by going to the bathroom and then taking an indirect way to the checkout. I was in the clear. Nope. Guess who was waiting just out the door, his car idling by the curb? I continue to ignore him. The parking lot was trafficy and surely there's no way he could get out in time to see which direction I was walking, right? Wrong. I'm walking next door, where my kid is having practice, and I can still hear him yelling at me. He's agitated and he's stopping traffic and then makes an illegal U-turn into the practice venue. I'm freaking the fuck out. Now, my kid had practice indoors at the venue that morning. I'm hoping I can get inside because I know the manager will lock the door behind me and call the cops. Nope. Random psycho has parked his car and is getting out of his vehicle. He's visibly agitated and walking towards me fast. He's yelling at me, I'll show you what I do to bitches that ignore me, you can't. I do not want this guy in the practice venue. He's a fucking psycho and there's kids there, my kid, other people's kids. One of the coaches is a young woman in her mid-twenties. One of the athletes is in her early teens. There's no telling what he would do. I have no idea if he's got a gun on him or not. I decided I'll go in the practice venue at the last possible second and lock the door behind me, if I can, 
I've never had to lock the door before, but at this stage, my priority is keeping him out of the practice venue. I'm freaking out, sure that this time, this time a random asshole gets angry or whatever because I don't talk to him after he cat calls me, he's going to beat me or rape me or kill me or all three. I bang on the door and yell and I hope someone can hear me inside. Two guys, one coach and his friend, come out to see what's going on. The guy takes off. That's pretty representative of cat calling that escalates. I've had similar situations happen over the course of my life. They're all terrifying and I'm left feeling like I've been attacked. I'm not particularly attractive. I'm not a butter face, either. I'm almost 50 years old and man, I thought this bullshit would stop happening by now. I normally don't talk about stuff like this, because there are usually social consequences to doing so, but here on Reddit my only real consequence is downvotes. I'm schizophrenic, and now that I'm on medication and have been in therapy and such, I can look back on the early times when it first started hitting me hard, and realize it wasn't real but this one event still terrifies me to my core. I have been having mild hallucinations for a while, maybe a couple of years, getting more and more frequent. Simple things like a random voice or seeing something that wasn't there, having paranoid feelings that people were deliberately trying to fuck me over or had it out for me, things like that. When I noticed them for not being actually real, I just wrote it off to the high stress of my job, this is about my first real psychotic break, and I will try to do it justice, but I'm not always so much with the words. One day, I was at my desk, doing a particularly boring part of my job, demographic updates, so essentially mindless data entry, I started hearing people talk to me, but not people I knew, had a feeling of being watched, and it had been getting worse throughout the day, but the more I just kind of zoned out doing my menial work, the worse it got. It got to the point that there were so many voices, shouting, whispering, they weren't really understandable, just constant babble like in a big crowd of talking people, but underneath it all was this sound. Like a heartbeat, just this constant thump thump, thump thump, getting louder and louder, eventually overtaking all of the voices. It paralyzed me with terror and increasing anxiety, I was pretty much just frozen there, my desk was in a back corner, and no one really had any reason to bother me while this was going on, listening to this thump thump, in time with my own heartbeat, then came the rushing noise of air, like very loud breathing, in time with my own, louder and louder until. I don't know, my mind just kind of broke, I saw, visually the entire universe, heard the heartbeats and breathing of every being in it, all going in time. The universe was a giant cosmic beast, with no true form, and all things were moving and living in rhythm with its massive beating heart and I was hearing it all, viewing it all, the secrets of existence opened in front of me, humanity was nothing, nothing anyone ever did mattered, we were like unseen mites in the eyelashes of the cosmic beast that was the universe. The feeling of being so small, so insignificant. It's hard to explain, and I now know that this was just a massive hallucination, but at the time, it was horrifying. From what I remember it lasted for about an hour, when I finally got my own vision back, and could move, I was terrified, absolutely out of my mind with fear, and literally ran screaming from my office building, out into the street, got hit by a car and blacked out. I don't remember much of the next year or so, maybe closer to two, but I spent more time in mental hospitals than out of them, and was not very coherent, according to the people who were around them that still talk to me, I lost my job, my wife divorced me, I wasn't allowed to see my son, these aren't bad things, apparently I was violent at times, and now that things are better I get to see my son, and have a pretty good relationship with my ex-wife. I don't remember much of that time, thankfully, but that one memory I don't think will ever go away and any time I think of it I have a near panic attack. When I was on vacation in Florida, I almost drowned. Me and a friend swam from shore to a buoy that didn't look that far out just to see what it was tied to. Once we got there, it was just tied to the ocean floor, which was about 20 to 30 feet down. When we turned to swim back to shore, I realized just how far out we swam. Also, due to the current, for every 10 feet I swam towards shore I was brought back 5. I additionally didn't realize how tired the swim out made me. About halfway to shore, my friend apparently was an Olympic caliber swimmer and already made it back, I was totally exhausted, but I just thought fuck this I'm not drowning today and got the biggest adrenaline rush ever. Once I made it to shore I laid on the beach for a long time out of exhaustion. When I was about 17, I was on my way home from a night out with my boyfriend. It was about 15 minutes till midnight, so I would be home right before my curfew. My dad called me, and asked when I would be home. I was confused why he was calling because it wasn't midnight yet, but I told him I was almost home. When I got there, he was lying on the couch with his eyes closed and asked me if I knew what a Mickey was. He explained it was term for a drug slipped into someone's drink. 
He told me they had been at a friend's house for drinks with some other people, and how after he, my mom, and another one of their friends had suddenly became extremely intoxicated after one beer. My parents and this one friend of theirs drink often and have been around the block enough times to know that they weren't just drunk. I went upstairs to check on my mom, and she had puked across the carpet in the way to the bathroom, and she was trying to wash her pillow. I tried to get her to go back to bed, but she kept mumbling about how she was okay and I should just go to bed, and wasn't really making any sense. I've seen both of my parents blackout drunk several times, they like to party once in a while haha, but this was nothing like that. I ended up driving my dad to another friend's house who had also been there, and she was fine. I heard him explain that he's had experience with weed and other drugs before, but this was something else and something was not right. We went back to my house and checked on my mom again, and she still had been throwing up, but she was trying to clean her shirt in the sink. It was terrifying seeing her like that, completely vulnerable and not being sure she and my dad would be okay the next day. The next morning they were both fine and had remembered what had happened, but still not sure who spiked their drink. When I was 18 my family was visiting my uncle in North Carolina for a summer vacation. It was pretty good, got to stay in a beach house, got to see the ocean, did some sightseeing. One afternoon we decide to go paintballing. We drive out to wooded area just outside of town, get our gear on, split up into teams, and start playing. My team is on the offensive and the other team is hunkered down behind an old shack and a rusted out car. My team start making their way down the trail leading to the clearing, but I decide to flank the enemy by going through the trees. After a few yards, I start to turn towards where I think everyone else is, hoping to catch them by surprise. Well I don't find anyone. I decide to go back to the trail and follow my team. I can't find the trail. I can't find anything. Every tree looks the same. I don't even hear shouting or paintball guns going off. I scream hello. No answer. Now I'm screaming help. As loud as I can. It probably only lasted a minute, but it felt like an eternity before my dad found me, and shot me. Turns out they did hear me, but they thought I was trying to trick them into coming out of cover. Who the yells help? At the top of their lungs as a trick? When I was 15 I was riding my bike home from school. It's like a 15 minutes ride most of the time but I left late once and caught a train so I went to go across the street, parallel with the tracks, to where the gates were up. When I did some dude in a rusty white pickup truck cut in front of me and almost hit me. I had to swerve right and while I crossed by his driver's side window I flipped him off. So I went along my way through the suburbs and took a right to get on the block where my house was and I saw a car stop and a guy get out. He's got a thick Eastern European accent and he keeps yelling what did you show me? I said this and proceeded to flip him off again. I sped away on my bike but he followed. So I had to cross a bridge that was meant for pedestrians and only about 3 feet wide. I doubled back and when I got in my house I stared out the window for like 30 minutes straight.